Okay, so let's just review what we've been doing the last couple of days then with derivatives of inverses. Uh, you remember that uh, we let, let g of x equal f to the negative 1 of x, okay? So and this is just a little bit of review, recall, okay? And um, if we took the f of, if we took f of g of x, that equals x, and from there we determined that the derivative or the instantaneous rate of change at some point on an inverse function is given by 1 over, that is the reciprocal of the original function, um, the derivative of the original function evaluated at g of x. This g of x, remember, is original x value, okay, for the original function, f of x, or the y value on f to the negative 1 of x, okay? So that's the tricky part if you get that figured out. Now, we've done a whole set of exercises like here, right? We did all these, um, and uh, we talked about these, and finding the instantaneous rate of change at this point. We use the y value because this point was actually a point on the inverse, so we use the y. So that's the, that's the biggest thing. And again, what I did mention before in explaining this was the neat thing about this or the, the, the great usefulness of this whole thing is that we don't have to actually solve for g of x. We don't. We just need the original function, take the derivative, and plug in the y value that's on the inverse or the x value of the original function. So the added wrinkle here is let's try and determine what the, what the equation of the tangent line is. Find the tangent line. And that's in, uh, insinuating that we need an equation here. Okay, so an equation of tangent line. At point 0.42 of the graph, f to the negative 1, so that's on the inverse, on inverse. So we're going to use which, the x or the y? Use y value, very good, to find our actual value of the instantaneous rate of change or the slope of the tangent line. Okay, so here, here's our uh, function. All right, so if we have both of these, uh, both of these graphs. Now, the, the red graph is our original function. The blue graph is the reflection of the y equals x line or the inverse. This is the inverse, okay? That's the graph of the inverse. So what we're trying to find, remember, is the, the equation of the tangent line at 4, 2. Okay. Let's go to, where's 4, 2? There's 4, 2. Look at that. Right here, I had it. 4, oh, I had it exactly. 4, 2. See that? Now, this is the, on the inverse, so it's the blue graph. I'm looking for the slope of the tangent line. It's probably going to be something that's pretty small, isn't it? Because that looks fairly, fairly flat, right? So we need to use the y value of this point or the x value of the point on the original function. So we remember that. OK. So first things first, let's find the uh, slope of the tangent line on the inverse. So f to the negative 1 of x, the derivative, right? is 1 over the derivative of f of x evaluated at, um, well, we can write this as the g of x or the f to the negative 1 of x, I guess. Okay. In reality, this is the derivative of f to the negative 1 evaluated at, we said we're going to evaluate this at 2. Okay, is 1 over, now what's the derivative of this original function? I think I can do that. That's going to be 3x squared plus 2, right? 3x squared plus 2. So this is going to be 3x, now what, what we're going to use there? We're going to use the 2 plus 2. Okay. Yeah, that's right. So once again, the derivative of the inverse evaluated at 2, this is a point on the inverse, um, this is going to be, uh, this, this value right here is the same value as this. Right, that's what that means, right? Mm -hmm. So you put the 2 into the inverse here, put the 2 um, uh, f prime of, yeah. The derivative with this. T Actually, I think this should be. Oh, no, I'm messing this up. 
This actually should be written as, this is actually at four. Because these are not the same. These are not the same. This is f to the negative one of four. Uh, and this should be actually two. Because that's what we did. So that's, that equals two. And this x is four. Very confusing. I, I know. I don't like it. I don't like it. When I start to use this notation, it's like, uh, just remember it's the x value of the original function or the y value of the inverse. That's all you put it. That's, that's, that's all you need to know. So with all this extra notation, it gets confusing. But what is it? So we got 1 over 3 times 4 is 12 plus 2 is 14. 1 over 14. You guys okay with that? All right, so that is the slope. Now, remember, if we go back to this, so right here, remember, here's the point, 4, 2. And a slope of positive 1 over 14 looks reasonable. It certainly does. Because, uh, let's see, 1 divide, uh, let's do y. Oh, come on. I'm not using my pen. y equals 1 over 14 x. Okay, so that green line is the line. And I am going to do, let's say, plus k, and I'm going to put a slider on k. Okay, see if I can zoom in here. So here's that green line. If I move this up, remember we tried to do this last time? It didn't work very well. <laughs> so on the point 0.42, oh, that looks pretty good right there. Now, do we have enough to go on here? Are we correct? It's pretty darn close, isn't it? It looks like there's, there's two intersection points. So this 1.7 is not quite right, and I don't want to get into this game again, but... You know, if we 1.7, what? 1.72? I don't know. Do we have an intersection point there? Not quite. Anyways, that's pretty darn close. And so that looks like our tangent line at 4, 2. You see how it deviates on both sides there? Okay. So we have our tangent. So, so that slope looks reasonable. I anyways, that's what, that's what I'm saying. And actually, just by doing this, you can kind of see what our what are uh, w pretty close to what our tangent line is going to equal. 1 over 14x plus 1.72. That actually might be pretty close to the answer that we should be looking for. So let's keep going. From this point, uh, let's do y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 in brackets. That's the point slope form of a line. All I need is I need to do um, the point. I need to use a point and I need to use a slope and I could find uh, a function that tells us what that line looks like. So y minus, now what's the x and what's the y here? This is on the, uh, this is on the inverse. So should we use, yeah, can we use this 4 as x and 2 as y, you think? Yeah. Okay, let's give it a try. So 1 over 14, x minus 4 then. All right which is y equals 1 over 14x minus 4 over 14 plus 2. Or that's 2 over 7 plus 2. Let's see what Mr. Calculator says here. Okay, let's do 4 divided by 14 plus 2 gives us about 2.29. Y equals 1 over 114X. Um, oh, you know what? Did I do a minus? I don't think I did a minus there, guys. That's a problem. That is a huge problem. Let's go back and insert a minus there. Where's my negative? There we go. Oh, here we go. 1.71. 1.72. Okay. And there we go. That is actually pretty close to... See? This... Uh, this equation that we kind of uh, moved into here from Desmos. Get rid of that one. Okay. So yeah, that is very reasonable that this is the equation of the tangent line. Why? Question? Um, All right. So I'll tell you what, your turn now. Why don't you try this one on your own and see how you do. Find the equation of the tangent line to the function at the given point on the inverse of that function. So this is on the inverse. And here's my original function. Go ahead. Um. 
Okay, so that's what you should have for an answer, and uh, y equals 1 over 9x minus 1 third.